What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash producer, Nick Scarpino. Okay, let's go. That was okay, gone. whatever. I, just <laughs> I waited for it. I was like, oh, he's doing the gone in <laughs> 60, gone 60 seconds. Thing, I guess. Uh, the Hispanic heartthrob, Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting, head shotting, nitro rifle from twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. I'm revved up. I'm ready to go, Greg. I'm ready to go. Good. Two monster he, energy drinks. Two, he's ready to go. To drink he's, that much. I don't know. He's definitely not. How many? Those are two right now. But how many have you had throughout the day already? Oh well, I had a frappuccino in the morning. And, Oof, Andy. and does is frappuccino short for frozen cappuccino? We'll never know. I think I it is. Know. I think it's absolutely it short for know. that. Yeah, you're the. You're we'll okay. we'll uh, and he's know. Forbes thirty under thirty, aka the second best baby blues in San Francisco, aka the verified one at Tim Gettys. I'm already loving the energy to this episode. We got a banger on our hands. Let's get right into it. Well, that's the thing. Of course, you know, we bring a guest in each and every week on the Kind of Funny podcast. Today, it is none other than star of stage and screen, Jerry O'Connell. Hello, Jerry. What an honor to be here, everyone. Greg, Nick, the engaged one, Andy. (laughs) So exciting to be here. Really, (laughs) truly. I mean, I do want to say... um, uh, you know, I'm. Go- I don't want to bum everyone out, but I am a recovering gamer. I am. Mm. I am in recovery. I. Uh, I gamed quite a bit. Uh, I quit about eight years ago. Wow. Um, I was a. I was a Call of Duty gamer. Oh, um, see. Oh my God. See, Jerry, oh, no. let Nick Jerry. and Andy bring you back into the fold and with Warzone. Listen, now, Nick, Andy. I mean, I. I want to say I. Um, I was a member of a clan. Okay. I was in a clan. <laughs> oh my okay. God, and, you were um, in. And um, we played every night from a lot of us. I'm older, I'm in my 40s, and a lot of us were married with children. And we would wait till our families went to sleep yeah. at around 10 30, 11. And then that's when it went down. That's when our <laughs> yeah. clan yeah. woke up. <laughs> and we would play every night till about, till about 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, it affected it affected everything. My wife at one point, um, uh, I was yelling, "We loved capture the flag." That was our that was our clan. That special. was the jam. We were we were ranked. We were internationally ranked. Our clan. <laughs> and um, I like I how you I say yelling... it with such reverence. Our clan, right. like you can't. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think around two a.m., two thirty a.m. I was um, I had. Very young children at the time, and my wife uh, probably had to be up early too. And at about two a.m., I was in the living room in my underwear, standing. I love to stand. I do this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see this. Me but too. I'm right, right there with you, Jerry. Power stance, right there. Right like there with spread, you. Yeah. And I'm right here. Like this mm-hmm. is it. Um, I mean, I don't game anymore, so I can say this. I did have a modified joystick. Ordered one. I found oh, come! One. You're cheating. Come on now. I you're using performance cheating. enhancers out there, I Jerry. I was cheating. I would. Uh, my my game was. I would have two handguns with a modified joystick, and it would just be like. And then wow. a lot of people I was against would accuse me of cheating. But at about two a.m., I was standing like this, <laughs> and I was yelling in my living room. I was yelling, "I've got B! Hey, don't worry, I've got B! I've got B! I've got B!" referring to the flag b yes yeah b yeah absolutely yeah absolutely i had a i had a theory in our clan and we did very well that b if you held b the entire game the game's all about you won capture the flag i believe the capture the flag is all about b that's my belief okay so you you didn't have any other call outs you just had b you (laughs) knew knew to go with that (laughs) um the joke was when we would meet in person um, I people would say like I got B like across the bar. That was like, my <laughs> thing. That it. was our clan joke. Wait, what was but, the, what um, was your clan name? What was the clan's name? Clan name. Um, because right now Andy and I are a part of two clans. Right now we're a part of the Squid Squad. What up? Represent yeah. Squid Squad. Squid I like squad. that. Um, and then when I play um, with my Italian friends, we're part of the Calzone. <laughs> I like it. 
I yeah. like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, what was our clan name? I'm just trying to make sure it's not going to offend anyone. You know what? It yeah. was. Uh, I, I, I love. Let me check. With <laughs> it, was time. it was a different time. You know what? We could. We could. We could not touch on that. But I will say <laughs> this, just to touch a little bit on the, uh, the the notion of potentially cheating. You'll be happy to know that nobody cheats in Warzone or uh, Call of Duty ever now. So that's something they've completely really gotten out of the game. Super clean. They um, have not. No. None of no, this is true. Not. Yeah. Nothing what they're saying is true. Very now, well, now, Jerry, Jerry, saying that oh, no. you you retired or that you've you're recovering well that no i, I, I want to hear the story because it sounds like at 2 so 30 in the morning he's screaming i've yelling, got b and his wife retires yelling, him. i've got b i've got b i've got b and my wife got up i love my wife she's a famous movie star rebecca romaine look mm -hmm. her up in x-men heard of her big big time uh, way out of my league infinitely out of my league uh, not even in my league like <laughs> completely different league i mean it's like playing, it would be like our clan playing like a group of five people that, you know, the servers just put together and mm -hmm. you just annihilate them. We're not even in the same league. Um, took my Xbox One, took it, shook, shook it out of its oh, wow. HDMI and picked it up and walked to the front door and threw it out. Wow. <laughs> threw it out the front door and turned to me and said, you have a, you have a problem. You have yeah. a problem. And I got to say, it was really affecting my work because you play till 3 a.m. You're messed up for the rest. You, the next day, you're messed up. You're a zombie. I wouldn't get to sleep until 5 a.m. because you're just thinking like, oh, I got to get B. I, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe I that. Be. I couldn't believe. I should have had a frag out. Frag out. Frag out. And then you're dreaming. And then you're dreaming of like. Oh, I yeah. Would always, I would always have dreams that people would drop frags when they, like, died next to me. And I'd hear it and I'd be like, oh, God, ah, drag out! <laughs> um, and it affected. And um, I got to say, much like a narcotic, um, I, I had to stop. And um, I miss it terribly. And it's so funny. During the pandemic, I did plug it back in. And I got the... The new Call of Duty. Is it the new Black Ops? Yeah, Black, Black Ops Cold War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you I played like Warzone Ops yet? Cold War. I have not played Warzone yet. Um, so and, I don't want, uh, at, at the risk of enabling. Yeah, we don't want to be enablers. <laughs> we don't want to be enablers. Uh, yeah. Nick, you but, do not want to get on the bad side of Rebecca Romaine. <laughs> I, d I don't. I, first off, I have no doubt that Rebecca will come to my house and shake the shit out of my PlayStation 5 and throw it out the window too, which my wife would love. You've got him. You got him back on that shit, Greg. <laughs> Andy, Nick, you got him back I, on that shit. I'm just going to throw please. it out there. We play almost every night when Andy's not playing Valorant. And we also play on our streams on Monday. Now, here's the difference between now and eight years ago, though. Eight years ago, it was just an addiction that was sad and ne you needed help. Now, it's a sad addiction that you can actually make money off of. And it can help propel your, uh, your day job yep. into the night. So this time, you honey, know, I, no, honey, I, I, I'm diversifying. I'm reaching the right. kids. I'm on Twitch. No, yeah, I know. I do have to just say, it's it just, it really, if you, and, and I do have other things that I'm very obsessive about. You know, I have an obsessive mind, which makes me play. And listen, the saddest moment is when you look at total hours played. And oh, that's a bad oh, I don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Oh, man. It's Listen, I, crazy. Jerry, and I'm, you think I could have learned to play the cello like I could have done <laughs> so much with the four years that I played Warzone. Um, and I hate that they use months in that time frame, too. It can't just be hours. <laughs> like they have to be like... <laughs> it can't just be hours. <laughs> Seven months for that. You've played this game for a total of seven months. A four year days. of You're your like, life. No. <laughs> it's so it's but fun though. You got to have something, it's so right? Fun. It's so fun. You know what it is? There's so few things. Here's what's so great about it. There's nothing in life, not even driving, where you can just sit back and just zone out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess watching shows, but honestly, it's not as exciting as shows. I. I've had a lot of trouble watching movies or anything since then. You know, I did. Um, uh, you know, I I, I I I I did pop in a Black Ops and I played the uh, what's the technical term Camp for it? Just the, a single uh, player campaign. I played the campaign yeah. and that's sort of like watching a movie and all that stuff. And I was sort of into that, but it really has changed how I view everything. And 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 I'll be back someday. You know, I mean, it's also I, mean, I gotta I'm say, also I don't want to bum you guys. I know I, I don't want to bum you guys out, but um, 
the reason why I'm doing our show uh, here in this park is because at my house. Wait, yeah, hold on. That's I the am, thing I do yeah. need to bring up. I do. <laughs> I, need some I was going to get there on my own, Jerry. But if you're going to bring it up, if you're an audio listener, <laughs> Jerry O'Connell, famous actor, is just in, <laughs> just in a park in a tank top yeah. <laughs> podcast. Yeah. You look great, Very by weird. the way. You look, this yeah. is a great look you got going it's a on. Great you are, look, yeah. Yeah, this, is uh, this looks and sounds better than guests we've had with like professional yeah, setups. It's Somehow, true. you in this random ass park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell great. you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. So I have, oh, what was your guess? Um, I'm so sorry. Who said that? Nick, was it? Uh, your guess for where who, you were? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, who, who, who wanted to guess uh, why I was in this park? Oh, no. I, 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 don't, I, had, I don't think I we have no any earthly clue. idea. I thought maybe I, I'm you, guessing this is just because... your thing. You, you were chopping wood. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Um, so I have two children who are 12 years old and, uh, not really gamers. They did play Among Us. They're super over that. Um, they're they're big. They're, <laughs> Me too. They're big. They're big Roblox fans. Sure. Um, that's some racket because every like three days they ask me for Robux, which I have to purchase <laughs> for them. Yep. It's so okay. I asked him for Call of Duty that points. Game, Whoever designed, yeah, I know, but Call of Duty points are real, tangible things. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Rush, it's real. <laughs> Rush, it makes a difference. But I'm getting Call something with a Call of Duty point. <laughs> Call of Duty is real life, bro. Is real, but things are fake. Jerry, step into um, the fucking zone with us, man. Hot drop with us on Monday. Let's go. Dude, yeah. I'm telling yeah, you, Jerry, yeah. I, I love Greg's idea of, okay, by day, you're this famous actor. By night, you need to start a Twitch channel. I already got the name, twitch.tv slash plan B. You just uh, go, you always go for B, baby. Yeah. Plan B. Oh, I got wow. B. I got um, B. That's what it's got to be. I got B. <laughs> uh, are you guys going to look down on me if I use my modified joysticks? No. Not yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, let's put let, no. Let me stop you right there because I have a confession to make. Now that we're best oh, friends, God. is that I play on PlayStation Five with a mouse and keyboard, and my mouse is inverted. I play inverted. Now, does that make you more? That's more of a challenge, right? No, it's inverted. just I'm 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 a child of the '80s and '90s, and when games went to 3D, I played a lot of flight simulators. And then when they went to shooters and like 3D, like actual 3D shooters, I just said, this feels right to me. And I never changed it. And if I had known back then that my coworkers would make this much fun of me because of it, I would have just stopped playing video games altogether. Right. Yeah. It's definitely an issue well, that we need to. Yeah. We, we bring it up with every guest so that they can sort of ridicule them for it. Yeah. So Jerry, if you want to just tear into him. Him. You yeah, know what I mean? It's like if you him. found out that you were driving on the wrong side of the road, you'd want to change that. But Nick embraces it for some reason. I just go to a different country where they drive on that side of the road. <laughs> That's what I do. Right. Okay. Um, but in which, this is, scenario. Is it just me or is, is, is it just me or is playing inverted more of a challenge? I mean, I, I think you just get used to it and it becomes it. For me, it's normal. For me, I can't. Right. Up is up and down is down is just some fucking is crazy to me. That's, I feel like I'm bananas. watching some kind of backroom political deal where Jerry's gonna be like inverted. That's fine, and he wants Nick to be like, well, joysticks <laughs> all the bottom. <laughs> no, I, that's I fine mean, whatever. Too. However you want to play is is how you want to play, man. However you want to drop into well, the zone no, with us next well, Monday. I mean, like if, if you play golf, golf clubs used to be what they call blades, which were just basically like very thin pieces of metal, and really no one plays with blades anymore because now they play with like carbon bigger clubs i don't really mm -hmm. know what i'm talking about but um I see andy does it's fine i do i but, do it's okay all right so andy you know what i'm talking about blades mm -hmm. right if you have yeah. a set of blades you're considered old school cool but if you're that able to cool. hit with them but if you're able to hit with them it's like having like a special old school talent it's like yeah knowing how you know to what? like i'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, you, you know what you've sold me you've sold me it, on this it makes me better than these guys because I play inverted. Is what you're I saying. mean, it's I would never when I'm setting my settings, I would never pick inverted. It's like I couldn't even think that way. I, I would be like having to learn how to hit lefty. I would just what yeah. is that? Yeah. Yeah. Using the blades thing, it's like in, in high school baseball, everybody has to use aluminum bats. But then the one cool the couple cool kids would use wooden Wood. bats. You'd be like, yeah. Wow, yeah. I don't even know. Whoa, that's crazy. So so I'm I'm kind of impressed. I'm I'm kind of impressed. The, thank you, thank you, Jerry. Don't and, 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 I mean, yeah, I thank like you. A, a talent that's like dying, and I think these kids <laughs> need to hear about it. Just like Nick, <laughs> a true. talent that's dying. It's, yeah. it's one of those things. It's one of those things where I I've, I've thought about trying to force myself to play um, non inverted. I'm not going to say it's normal. I'll say non inverted, right? Um, but it's 
it's so difficult that I think the only way I'll ever not play inverted is if game publishers stop putting that option in in the options. And until that day comes, Tim, you're gonna have to pry this controller, my, my inverted mouse, out of my cold dead hand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tim, Jerry, I, I don't, I don't want to go too deep into this story, but it is worth it. I promise you. Uh, there's this big video game convention called E3 that we go to every sure. year, uh-huh. where they announce yeah. all the new games. We get to play so them a little you early. Tell the or Tony's Hawk story? Are you telling no, about Tony Hawk? Okay. No, no. <laughs> don't tell so that I pissed off Tony Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Nick, out of all of us, is, is the, or at least was, the least gamer of all of us, and uh, he rarely goes to these game preview events. But there was one time we had to send him to one, so we sent him to play this game called the crew which is a a a racing game like you're racing cars all right Uh in this game and uh when nick shows up he asked the developers of this game uh if before he's like before i can get into this can i can i invert the controls and they're just like no like (laughs) and like nick thought it was a shooting game nick thought it was like call of duty uh, and right. the reason he thought that no, I thought was it was like when, Grand Theft Auto, where like you have a crew that goes in, robs stuff, and then it goes right. into the car. It sounds like it could be like an offshoot of Hitman. Remember that amazing game? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, they're still making like, those bad you know, boys. But to, to be fair, now I think back on that, and I'm like, well, you know, if it's a car game, Tim, you do pull back on the stick to like adjust where you're going this way. So I wasn't wrong. The guy ended up doing it. But what he said to me, and I'll never forget this, was he was like, well, I guess there's one part where you fly a plane. So sure, I guess I'll invert the controls for you. And I was like, that's so insulting to me. I'm like, do you not fucking know I work with Greg Miller? Do you know I work with Greg Miller? Mm-hmm. Why, are, why is Jerry in a field? I need why are you in a field? field? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you. So I have two children who play Roblox nonstop, mm-hmm. who listen to the app formerly known as Musical.ly, a.k.a. Sure. TikTok. Yeah, sure. Um, and they just suck up all bandwidth, all yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. And... You know, this is like the afternoon. I don't have to tell you guys. This is like when bandwidth, you know, gets a little like shaky. Whoever is is holding the button, you know. Um, so uh, if I have an important interview to do, and I do consider this the most important thing I've done Thank in twenty twenty one. Wow! Um, Thank you. Thank you. Huge. I come directly under a five G tower. I can feel the COVID hitting me as Good. we speak. <laughs> yeah, that's just That's what causes me it. right now. I am. I mean, legit, right under it. And if you uh, touch the tower, the it's better than Pfizer. It, it's better than the Pfizer shot. <laughs> <laughs> I um, uh, this is where I get my best reception. And I knew, you know, you're a very like sort of techie podcast. I didn't want to be like, uh, uh, no, great call. So, great call. Um, Perfect. This is why I'm here. It's so, is it a right? public park or my, is this on your estate? Uh, this is a public park. This is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No idea what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Somebody's walking their dog like, is that fucking Jerry O'Connor <laughs> screaming, God, God, B? Actually, I'm, I'm not afraid of the dog walkers. I'm a little afraid of the unhoused who might be creeping out of here. Sure, so uh, sure please, yeah. Uh, yeah. Watch my six while I'm in this. These are noise cans. <laughs> yeah, no problem. If so someone uh, starts to creep out from my... We're, we're very well acclimated to that. We all live in San Francisco. Nick's a, so. Yeah, Jerry's about to get Call of Duty flashbacks. Like, Behind you, we got uh, on your six, on your six. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What's so funny about that, though, is you, you touched on something that I don't think I ever it ever occurred to me was happening to me until you said it. You were saying when you start dreaming about Call of Duty, like that's when you know you have a problem. And I'm like, oh, I, fu- I fucking do. I dream about like dropping in and cutting my shoot and like forgetting to cut the shoot or you cut your shoot. You forget to like pop it again and you smash onto the fucking ground and die. And then you have to tell all your friends you're embarrassed because someone sniped you. Yeah, that's yeah. usually what happens with me. Now, now the, I always think of the the plays that got away, right? If I would have just mm. seen that guy in the if corner just of the left. wall, yeah. you know, you know, you got to assume it's Bill Buckner with the ball going underneath his legs or, you know, in my in, in my instance, what if Tim Duncan was on the floor and guarded Ray Allen and prevented the three from happening with the Spurs against the Heat in the 2013 finals? Those little moments, That's Jerry, funny. are my superstar moments. If I mm-hmm. would have hit that headshot, we would have mm-hmm. won the game. And I stay mm-hmm. up at night thinking about those things. Yeah. I can't, it's, it's traumatizing. You know, I, I, I have to say, um, my my gaming career became a little isolated because my friends sort of fell off a little bit. It turns out that, you know, if you're trying to maintain a job and a family, it's difficult to play Call of Duty. It's difficult to keep a clan together until 4 a.m. seven nights a week. Um, and so I started actually isolating in my gaming a little bit. I started playing Madden a lot. Sure. And um, 
you know, it's funny. I could never. Um, Who's your team first go, off? Well, I could. I'm. Um, you don't even want to know. I could never. <laughs> you put on the Jets hat. He's a Jets fan. <laughs> oh, I didn't Jets even see the Jets fan, hat. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's so embarrassing. They're, like, it's not even worth a uh, discussion. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, although um, Garoppolo was my QB last year, and he, I came in dead last in my uh, in my league. So I want to thank all of you Northern Californians for that, for having me pay the penalty fee in my fantasy league. Thank you. You're welcome, um, Garoppolo. But um, <laughs> uh, I uh, started playing Madden, and I was getting. Um, you know, I don't play franchise mode, which is funny because my brother's a huge gamer and he's able to play franchise mode for months, which is, you know, you form a team, you you play not online for you just play the computer for months and months and months. And he was able to do that. I'm only able to get like the juice is flowing, which is why we do all of this anyway. When uh, I was playing head to head live, someone else, mm. uh, typically someone who would talk. Uh, oh, you wanted to trash talk. They were trash talking you. You know, I wanted to trash talk. I was very careful of trash talk. Even back then, I would never say anything um, totally offensive. But I enjoyed beating people and hearing them get frustrated. Yeah. And like nothing is more satisfying than playing a game of Madden. And you see connection lost, knowing that out. someone like, oh, yeah. oh, but someone had to like reset. Someone <clears throat> had to reset their Xbox. It was just like, and you know, they had like another five minutes of booting that up, and it was like, I got this so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you just got to him take a <laughs> moment. The, well, if you ring if... for a while, just go downstairs, go get something to eat, chill out. Like you have five <laughs> minutes now. Like you I, earned this. <laughs> I shut what? your system down. I took down the system. That's how <laughs> humiliated you were. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that's great about I don't know if how long they've been doing it, Andy. You can fill me in on this, but one of the things that's great about uh, Call of Duty now is if they leave their mic open and you kill them, it 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 will it will play back like the last what three seconds of their audio. So you'll kill someone and you'll just hear "Oh fuck," and it's great. <laughs> it's gr it's yeah. so gratifying. Wow, you guys are really talking me into it. I might have I'm to. Telling I you. might have to dust off. Gotta I might get have in to the dust zone. The old modified joysticks. See, See this? You want to? You want to? You want to <laughs> break? You want to break the kids from Roblox? This is what you do. You reintroduce the joys of Dad Call needs of the duty TV. to them, yeah. and they're like, yeah. and then guess even, what? Think about it. You already have two other clan members right there. You put them all together. There yeah. you go. It's family bonding. Yeah, you know what's funny? Um, I don't mean to generalize and stereotype, but uh, I, you know, I, I, um, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but um. Gamers, um, there's something there's something about Bloxburg and Roblox. My daughters, yeah, you enjoy got daughters. building like, sure. you know, in Bloxburg, they build houses and it's almost like uh, I'm not assigning gender to anything, you sure. know, but I'm sure, just sure. saying like, uh, I, I don't think I'll ever get them. It's funny. I tried to I had a friend that I worked with had a son and I went to their house and I played Fortnite for a little bit. And Oh man, I hope I'm not offending anyone. I could just, I just couldn't bite. I just was like, "Fuck you, Jerry O'Connell. You offend me." <laughs> Fuck oh, you. Fortnite's <laughs> great. You don't get Fortnite it. Sucks. He doesn't get it. Oh, Fortnite sucks. <laughs> it was too fantastical. Like they were telling me to build walkways and bridges, and nah. I was like, "No, man. I want to go to war. Like, yeah. this isn't real. <laughs> <Wars aren't> <laughs> you never build. You just murder. You kill. That's all you do." No, I know, but like I want to go to like Chechnya, an actual place in Chechnya, <laughs> yeah. and like <laughs> I want to go to Eastern Bloc. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like I was getting killed by like, you know, like LeBron, and like it was yeah. like character <laughs> and things, and I was like, this isn't real life, man. Like you don't understand. And I told that kid, I was like. You know, you don't know what real life is. You don't know what real battle is. You need to put Call of Duty on. Like, this is this is make believe. Like, I was in the shit, man. I yeah, was in dude. the shit. Yeah, you you, <laughs> you didn't see what I saw. I was I in the shit. You in I was this in part. the shit. Getting close to the camera, saying I was in the war, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I think that's Jerry O'Connell. Stay back. Stay back. <laughs> Get away. He's, he's having a flashback of uh, modern warfare. <laughs> Any idea? There was an abandoned pool in Eastern Europe. You don't know what. I saw in that abandoned pool. <laughs> this is great. Sure, no, oh my god! You have no idea. This is the yeah. best content we've. To done your point, here. one of the things I, I and I want I, this is interesting because I say this and I don't have children, so I know nothing about it. But one of the things I always do when I talk to somebody and they're like, I have no idea what Roblox is, or if, if, for the older kids now, I don't know what Minecraft is and what my kids were into then, right? What the fuck? Is somebody <laughs> walking by you right now? What's happening? Oops. What? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I just want to say R.I.P. to Daft Punk. I was a huge fan. 
I love that band. The audio oh, sounds remember, better now because the audio is bouncing remember. back. Yeah, it's all, it's oh, all really? just caught up in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you didn't sound um, bad before. We, no. we need to see the mustache. Don't worry about that. We need to see um, the mustache. But no, no, oh, I was yeah, sorry. But to know. my point before I let it go, Roblox in uh, Minecraft, right, are Legos, right? And I feel like every kid played with Legos, but you didn't. And not every kid plays video games. Not every kid finds something right. in there. So it's like sure. digital Legos, but it's not necessarily the gateway to gaming. Right. I, I do have to say, we just got my daughter's phones. They're 12. Gotcha. And it was a big deal that they got phones, you know, um, getting your kids your first phones. 12 was actually kind of late, you know. I mean, a lot of their friends had phones, have had phones for years. And, you know, it, everything is, including video games, including Instagram, including phones, including Roblox. It's just, there's a form of, there's a set TikTok. There's like a, there's a gratification. There's a serotonin, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. you know this from trying to go to, you can't just shut off, you can't just shut off Call of Duty and go to sleep. No, you need no. like, I got to give an hour. An hour. It's an hour. I mean, that's crazy. Like, think about like other pastimes, like reading a book or something. Like you, I, I read a book for 20 seconds and I'm like. <sighs> that's Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin. Fought. Kevin can't yeah. read. He, yeah. he can't even read the Office if it's broad daylight. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> back just, he can read. Can't he read. Just can't. <laughs> no, so I open. I I open a book and I fall asleep immediately. Immediately. As long as, yeah. if my mind has a moment where it's like trying to concentrate, I'll cold. I, that's why I got to do four things, four things at all time. Yeah, but it does. It does get back to my original point that I really um I I spent a lot of my thirties. 30s not even my 20s my 30s uh playing video games i don't regret one second of them but i do want to say it did you know stop me from writing the great american tv sure. pilot you know it did yeah. uh it did take away from it did take my energy away from other things and it was because i was not able to do it um you know like a like a normal person and sure. you know, I, I I probably will recharge my batteries, go and hit you guys up. But um, it's uh, it's it's something that I'll be acutely aware of when I uh, when when I jump back into your clan, when I'm accepted into your clan, when we have the uh, the initiation ceremony. I mean, I'm talking, talking to, I'm talking to squad. Yeah. I'm talking to our clan leader right now, a Snowbike Mike, and he's saying that you could be an official member of the Squid Squad whenever, okay. whenever you want okay, to drop good. into our Discord and play with us. I hope I uh, hope I could carry my own and I don't bring you. Well, I'm down. terrible, so you're going to be way better than me anyway. It's going to be That's great. <laughs> Mike, this seems my like an kill count time. ratio. I always keep my kill count ratio up. Trust me. I'm good. good. Mine's at point I'm five. Not, I'm I was never say, yeah, What's your KDR there? Uh, Mine's how you doing? Point five. Yeah. I, yeah. Late, recently, I don't know if it's counting toward it, but I've been just dropping into plunder, no, and throwing on Pink Floyd, and just murdering people. But that's uh, thankfully that doesn't count. It only counts when you drop into the war zone, right? Yeah, the, the, the war right? like yeah. you're aware, Jerry, that the war zone is very much like Fortnite, right? Where it's a battle royale, the last people standing, right? You so there's a hundred and you don't build shit people. though. You're not trying to build a shed out there and with yeah. fucking yeah. brick or whatever the hell. Fortnite there's hundred and fifty people <laughs> dropping on a gigantic map, and it's find loot, kill the other teams, survive right. as long as you can, and hopefully, if you're right. the last team standing, you survive. The, there's always yeah. a big ring coming in of poison gas and you have is, to like it is what we like to call high risk high reward so yeah. if you like that right. adrenaline hit of making people right. rage quit imagine if you're the last two teams standing and you get that last kill and how right. pissed off that kid's gonna be Oof. uh just fuel just the to fire let you know, um my uh my gear that i typically liked um uh if if i wasn't using modified handguns which i highly suggest it's amazing um, <laughs> I, would use, uh, I don't know if that's the meta right now, but we'll we'll figure it out for you. I would use um, uh, sort of like middleweight. I don't know the name of the guns. Uh, like ARs or submachine guns, or you know, not submachine guns. Something lighter. I loved I loved the mobility. Like I was always moving. I never stood still. You know. But one yeah, thing no. that always got me killed is any time I ever tried to snipe, I always died. I just. I'm just Andy's not got a sniper. you covered on that. Yeah, you got, got you covered on Andy's that. out here clicking heads, ripping them to shreds. It's in yeah. the whole intro. I just have, you know, being a sniper is, um, it, it just takes a special kind of talent. And you're I either born with it or you're not. It. You're either born with it or you're not, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Jerry, we're going to get you a Mac 10. We're going to get you a leveled up Mac 10 as your submachine right. gun. And you and right. me are going to go clean out some household, some, some houses in Verdansk. We're just going to go floor <laughs> to floor and just clean them out hilarious
Hilarious. Here's what you need to know, Jerry. No one's trying to pressure you to get back into Call of I Duty. I am 100% pressuring you. No one's saying 100%. you should come stream it with the Squid Squad you do it on a Monday, Monday with us on Monday. TV slash Kind of Funny Games. But as you know, uh, we take care of one another here. And so while you were talking, I sent a message to Xbox that read, Rebecca Romaine threw Jerry O'Connell's Xbox in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> and he's laughed on gaming because of it. And the Xbox it's, responded... It's, they responded, uh, what the fuck, Rebecca? Why would she do that? And they're going to send you an Xbox Series X if you're ready to jump back into Verdance. If it you're was ready to years come back ago. To I just want to say this didn't happen recently. It was years ago. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a tumultuous time for us. Things have smoothed over. There haven't been any electronics thrown out at all <laughs> um, in, in days. Date. Sure. <laughs> Listen. Here, here's what here's what I'm gonna say. I'm I, I don't have any children, and uh, my wife uh, still loves me, so that's good. But I'll say this: you just got the kids' phones. They're 12 years old. 12 right now. That's the new 30. Okay. The phones can. They but they're pretty much taking care of themselves at this point. Rebecca, she is who she is. Phenomenal career. Phenomenal human being. You should feel no problem whatsoever. Spending three to six hours a day with us. Just <laughs> That's a lot of time. time. So we, more so. <laughs> your kids are going to be fine. They're they're great. <laughs> they're a year away from being teenagers. They're not going to want to talk to dad anymore. This yeah. is easy. <clears throat> so fun. Oh, so tempting. I'm sure I'll be back. Here, yeah, I know. Here's the I, thing. Like, I mean, I, I'm getting your address and sending you the Xbox. Is sending you this Xbox. You're getting the new <laughs> oh, now, Xbox. No, <laughs> now I have a question. Uh, this is going to make me sound really old. I have a question for you, whippersnappers. Uh, back in my day, when you played, it used to be you were either an Xbox person or a PlayStation person. It's all cross-platform. Uh, oh, really? It's We've all torn those walls down. I'm on PS5. Andy's on PC. You can be on Xbox. I think Mike plays on Xbox sometimes, too. And I think he's trying oh. to play on PC right now. Um, it's all, yeah, you just have an Activision um, name and, like, uh, wow. yeah, like an ID. Can I? Basically. Put can I Wii play go. on my can I play on my Wii? That's all set up. No, no, the Wii is <laughs> no. I'm joking. That was a humorous yeah. comment. It was a joke. We were running with the bit. We knew you weren't serious, O'Connell. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were like, no, you nerd. Listen here. I don't know. Andy like, just Andy just played Fortnite on Switch for like three hours and then came back and was like, it was the worst experience of my life. It was rough. Oh, it was rough. God damn it. Apex Jerry, Apex. you've already superseded expectations. Cause when Apex, I was like, sorry. cool, do you know Discord? And you're like, no, but I'll figure it out. I was like, ah, oh, this guy. Not showing up on the podcast. This is <laughs> this is gonna be a, a 3:30. Hey, uh, can we do this on Zoom? I can't figure this shit out. And somehow, not only did you figure it out, you're on your phone in a public park with an amazing jet hat on. Tower, like under that's my five, favorite part of this. Under a 5G tower, risking everything. Yeah, <laughs> get those um, extra absorbing it, it all. Really funny. Right when I stopped gaming, when I had to give up my uh, habit. Look, I, the first thing. The first step was saying, I do have a problem playing video games. Sure. I, mm -hmm. we never I can't, say that. I know, but I couldn't just play for like a half hour here or a half hour there. And listen, a lot of times, you know, addictions are like that. You know, I mean, like somebody can't have like a puff of something. They have to smoke a bale. Sure. You know, somebody can't have like a sip of something. They have to have a case. You know, it's like. That's me with cigarettes. A, it, I had to quit. So it took me forever to quit smoking cigarettes because it was problem, the worst You know, addiction. I mean, yeah. look, there are some also people so who cool. can, some people who like once a year walk outside of a bar and go, Hey, can I bum a cigarette? I, I, I hate those people. I hate those people. Those people That's could just, it. if you say, if you, if I see those people outside of a bar, I'm like, I just, I hope you get, I hope your toe gets run over by a car. Not the whole party. You just like one of your toes. Like it hurts. Chill. What are we doing? Just, All right, chill out. I think it's just, I think it's just a chemical thing. Like, yeah. I think it's just like a brain thing and just how your brain feeds it. And video games for me, um, it was like all it was like all I could think of, you know. It was yeah. really all I could think of, and uh, it's 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 fun to talk about it. I I can't wait to jump back in. I I really can't, and I'll try and do it in a more tempered. Well, here, manner. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. You can jump in with us whenever you want. And all kidding aside, you have an, a standing invite to play with us whenever we're streaming, and it's usually only three hours once a week. So you can come yeah. back in, play that play that one session with us. And then later online, if you feel like going hard for like six hours, uh, you know, six, seven, like, 12 hours, I'm going to sound like I'm going to sound like a real pervert now. But what if I went to <laughs> and I don't even know if they're open in the quarantine. Mm -hmm. What where if I went on? to one of those like gaming centers, one of those places where you rent a seat? You know oh. what I'm saying? 
I don't think we well, no, have those I think that's like a 2001 thing. I don't even know if they yeah, use it anymore. That's gone, but I do have there. a question about that. Like, where did the perversion come in with this? Well, I mean, I've never been in those places, but you know it's like... Oh, Tim, there's all sorts of shit happening in those places. You know you there's like know bad... I'm so sorry, but like... <laughs> bad things happening in those yeah. I'm sorry. I'm on Jerry's level. I'm on Jerry's level. Come on. But Let's call I mean, it what it is. <laughs> First of all, everyone should have a console in their home and doing it there. And if you don't, if you have to go to one of those places, also, like, the person who rented you the console also sells vape juice and mm-hmm. can fix your cell phone. Yeah. yeah. And Screen. While you're, playing, <laughs> while you're playing, he says, let me look at your phone. I'll fix whatever, like, chips are in there. Boom. And then you give him your phone. And then you realize, like, someone else is on your phone all the time. Like, no offense to people who own cyber cafes or whatever the... <laughs> F their call, I don't. But. I don't think. I don't. You know. I don't know. I'm not terribly worried about yeah, offending those people. Of if there's still, if there's still <laughs> cyber cafe owners around, you guys get your fucking life together. I wasn't start a cat cafe like a normal human being. For I Christ's wasn't. Sake. I was not expecting this to be the show where Jerry O'Connell goes after cyber cafe owners. <laughs> I, I mean, it's expecting. about time. It's about time that we got to the truth of of <laughs> the five G tower say... starting COVID and the cat cafe. No, is no, me. we cannot. I, no, hey, listen. I do understand. I do understand. We always used to have my brother host our our call of duty games because his internet was by far faster than all of ours Mm -hmm. but you also my internet is pretty slow at my house and uh people get a step on you you know oh Um, dude no here's the thing i'm I'm gonna tell you right now i'm looking at new internet kevin's helping me you got to get gigabit internet you got to get at least a gig up and a gig down just to feel like a human in these games now because i got comcast and andy keeps telling me that's the reason why i'm not good at warzone that's the only reason why that's the only that's the the problem you back for sure yeah uh, let's not call out any large companies that I may or may not work for. Like, Great you, like you can get you Comcast can phenomenal. We love Comcast. My wife loves it for the cable Stop service. And I'm sure there's a great games. internet connection that's there. <laughs> We love Comcast. We're a Comcast house. Well, here. A large well you are fuck AT and T U versus A AT and T U versus. No, stop saying Nick. Nick, stop. 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. It's another. I might get Sonic. We'll see. We may. We may. You could get fiber. Some of these companies have fiber. Well, you never know. We love all these companies that are larger parent companies to <laughs> yep. broadcast corporations yep. that hire me for their shows. We yep. love yep. them all. Love them. Love them. That's great. Great to people at all of them. That's great to protect that, Jerry. But you definitely lost the Brian's Cyber Cafe sponsor. Yeah, you're not getting that sponsor. You're not cutting an ad for Brian's (laughs) Cyber Cafe. You're not getting those guys. We're friends with someone that used to run one of those. Mike Aransky used to run a Cyber Cafe. Aransky ran Jerry's thing. He's a pervert. That's my thing. Well, I don't want to say not a pervert. I don't want to say he is is not a pervert. He is not. He is not. Nice guy. But I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some shady things going on. And again, perverted doesn't necessarily need to be the worst stuff. It can just be like drugs, you know. Yes, stabbing, exactly. like cool Perverse. drugs, yeah. like a perversion. Yeah, of cool drug. That's what it is. Cool drugs, exactly. Before we before we move on and segue to talk oh, about no. Jerry's career, I just got a I got a random tweet, Jerry. Um, because we have we have a bunch of questions about you know past work and future work and current work, but I got a random tweet from somebody who uh, their name is Chavis on Twitter, and they said, um, if you can get Jerry O'Connell to do his Stu Gotts impression, I'll donate 100 bucks to charity. Um, I, you know, Stu Gotts is a famous uh, um, sports radio. Right. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Oh, we know. I'm a gigantic fan. Yeah. You know, I, I used to call into that show a lot. And I used to do like sort of a Stu Gatz when I call it, you know. Uh, it's just not how he I sounds at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not a good Stu Gatz? No, it's really <laughs> bad. I, I know it's, it's like. It's super. Because they called you out on the show also about how bad it was, Jerry. But I, I think if you keep, we keep working on it, we'll I love get it. it. We'll get it. Jerry, a better I don't one know day. what Stu Gatz sounds like. So it was spot on in my brain, man. <laughs> On. Just the heart breaking yeah. his eyes. Hey, Roger, he, clip it out he, and rewind it as he <laughs> finds out his impression's bad. <laughs> tell uh, tell uh, Chavez, uh, I'm really upset. I've been working on that for a while, and I think uh, the hundred dollars to the charity is is still a it's still a go. It's oh, go. no, he's there he's, he's putting a hundred bucks there. We're holding his feet to the coals he, uh, on that one. Wait, what was it? how did two uh, guys? He's been off. Uh, I mean, I'm s- sorry to say, uh, R.I.P. Uh, the Dan Lebetard show and all that guts, but uh, um. I guess Stu Gatz, he didn't have that deeper voice. He had sort of like, I know it was like a, oh yeah, 
this is my stew guy. He's sort of, uh, it was a sort of it's closer. Uh, well, uh, red skin, yeah. It was sort of like it's uh, closer, yeah. You know, he was always like, uh, in, he was always inquisitive, like Stu Gatz. He always uh, talked like this. You know, I'm originally from the New York area, so I love anybody who's got sort of a thick New York accent. It's, it's like I mean, that, it could know. still use a little bit of work, Jerry, but I, it's still <laughs> like I'm, re- I'm, we're getting donations left and right to charity, so that's all we right. needed that for. As far Thank as I'm concerned, so that's that's two Stugatz impressions that he's done. So yeah. whoever, <laughs> whoever that person was, 200 bucks to charity. Come on. In my defense, it's something I haven't thought about. I'm not kidding you. In about 700 days, so uh, <laughs> you know, there was no pre, there was no pre-interview for the kind of funny. You were. Prepared. Prepared. Uh, you were prepared. We we're just here. We go. It was a great <laughs> job. Great job. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Speaking of that, everybody, this is the kind of funny podcast. Each and every week, twice a week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather around these microphones, each coming to bullshit with each other about whatever it is they want to bullshit about. You like that? You can head over to Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny, where of course you can be part of the show with your questions, your comments, your concerns. You, of course, could get the show ad free. You could get it with the exclusive post show we do on Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny, and you could be watching live just like Demetrius Newell is, Lexi G is, James Davis R. Of course, if you have no bucks, toss our way on patreon.com slash kind of funny. It's no big deal. You can get each and every episode of the show for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, and on podcast services around the globe twice a week. But of course, remember there are ads and no post show. Housekeeping for you, there's a brand new CVS uh, crank call up over on youtube.com slash kind of funny. You can go check that out as I try to help Andy and then Andy and Nick screw me over. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Willie D. Billums, Julian the gluten-free gamer mick aka at the nanobiologist dj kento steve powers kieran o'donnell and tom bach today we're brought to you by youtube.com slash kind of funny plays and let me tell you about that right now what's up everybody this episode of the kind of funny podcast is insane and it's sponsored by well, let me look at the ad here when, who wrote it oh that's right it's youtube.com slash kind of funny plays if you didn't know uh in 2021 we decided to take twitch.tv slash kind of funny games way more seriously we hired snowbike mike to do streams each and every day usually for three hours thanks to your support and we heard you all say hey that's awesome but i can't watch them live i'm in a different time zone i have a job this baby over here needs food wah 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 that's the baby crying not you uh and so what we did is we had a new youtube channel youtube.com slash kind of funny plays this has all the daily streams archived there we take them off of twitch because twitch is all like hey dmca we're gonna take you to jail or whatever and i'm like don't take me to jail take kevin like we can't take kevin he's too crafty and so we made this youtube channel youtube.com slash kind of funny plays you can go over there you can watch the streams you can catch up you can go over there you, you can go through them real quick if you want you know you want to just do the specific parts uh over there we just did a morning show that's right the kind of funny morning show came back from a day it's over there uh today me and uh snow bike mike as of recording this went and played a whole bunch of amazon luna that's up over there there's a bunch of great stuff up so why don't you go to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays and click the like subscribe and share buttons also click the bell and i know you're like i don't care about the bell the bell actually helps metric wise and i think gets us further in the algorithm so actually while you're here just go to all the youtube channels all three of them now you play kind of funny plays kind of funny kind of funny games go there subscribe like the videos and then click the little notification bell and it's not like an, it's not like you get a text message like hey i guess text messages what i was gonna say i text messages wouldn't talk because I was giving like an inflection there. The text message, of course, would be more like, I am a robot, like there's a new video up. I don't think they have that functionality. I don't actually know. I mean, I, I click the bell, but I don't know if I've enabled those notifications. But like, it'd be cool if you went and enabled the notifications as well. Then you'd be like me, you know what I mean? And like, if one day there is some way that you can click a notification bell and you'll get a thing from me that'll be like, hey, there's a new video on kind of funny plays or kind of funny games or kind of funny, then I'll do it for you. But uh, yeah, and if you're like, man, Greg, this ad's really going on too or too long. Just remember patreoncom slash kind of funny. You don't have to be listening to this ad, but because you don't want to give us money, which is totally cool, I'm asking you not to click the bell. That'd be better. But because of the no money thing, this is what you get, and so it just keeps going like this. You know what I mean? And now, what I want you to imagine: Beatles in your ears. Think about that. You didn't have to do that oh, if you would have gone to Patreon. Now. I wouldn't they, have to do my that. Ears I wouldn't. I don't mean to be a podcast criminal. I don't mean to come in here and like do these things to you. You know what I mean? But I had to just remind you. Attacked my ears. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Otherwise, ear beetles. Okay, Jerry O'Connell out in the field. Here's here's the thing about you that I love is that I say Jerry O'Connell's coming on the podcast. And of course, for me, that means the star of Sliders is coming on this podcast, the greatest show of all time, right? That Great deserves show. a reboot. It deserves one of these streaming services to pick it up and do something with it. I digress. When I say it, everybody else says something different for your career. I got people shouting out about Lower Decks. 
I got people shouting out, obviously, about Stand By Me. Uh, they, of course, they, everybody knows I'm a big Superman fan. You're, you've been a great Superman. We'll get to that, of course. When you're stopped on the street and somebody goes, oh, my God, Jerry O'Connell, you're underneath a 5G pole in a park. What do they usually say they know you from? Or is it broken up by ages? Or how does that work? It depends on the demographic. Mm. If you are about um, 30, then you only know me as the guy in the kangaroo movie. I was in a there film. There we go, baby. <laughs> 30 to 31. I 31. <laughs> I was in a film called Kangaroo Jack. It, um, <laughs> let me tell you, there's a little bit of a story. I'm going to try and tell this story quickly because it's not as interesting as modified. No, choice. this is going to be, this is the story Tim was looking forward to. He was like, you think he's going to talk about kangaroo I wanted to hear this Jack, story from like, you, so I'm let's extremely go. excited about Let's this. go. In 2003, Myself and Anthony Anderson, great actor, uh, blackish, amazing actor, oh, 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 award order. winning actor. Yeah. Law and Order. Um, he and I starred in a R rated film, okay, about two low level mafiosos who have to go to Australia to deliver a payment of $10,000 to a mafioso. When we get there, we're driving through the outback. We hit a kangaroo. We kill it. It's based on an urban legend in, in, in Australia that this happened to a tourist. And they take the kangaroo carcass and they put their jacket on the kangaroo carcass and start taking selfies with it. And the kangaroo wakes up and runs away. Now, the urban legend is it runs away with their passports and the passports are gone. But they decided to Jerry Bruckheimer, big time producer, um, said let's do like an r-rated sort of like a midnight run with two bumbling mafiosos chasing a kangaroo in the outback okay and we did it a lot of cursing nudity um you got me I mean, it was like a it was an r-rated movie they immediately tested the film the second they had a cut of it and everyone was like this like I was going to take my kids to this. Isn't this about a talk? They thought it was about a talking kangaroo because on the, they said it was about a kangaroo with a jacket on it. And they went, I can't take my kids to this. You know, he's saying the F word and there's nudity and it's just sex and it's a dirty movie. <laughs> and they said, well, yeah, it's a rated R movie. And they went, well, you can't do that. You have like a, you have a kangaroo in it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, then, so then they called me up. And they said, listen, bad news. We're making it a PG movie. And I went, wow, really? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, why is that bad news? And they went, well, sometimes when films are really cut down like that, it's not the same product. And I was sort of new to the business. I was in my 20s, in my mid-20s. And I was like, it doesn't bother me. You know, do what you want to do. I'm not going to tell Jerry Bruckheimer how to cut a movie, you know. Um, and they assured me they do testing and this is what they do. So we did some reshoots on it, and one of the reshoots was I get knocked out, and I have a dream about a kangaroo that, like, raps. And so they were going to animate a kangaroo that sings, like, I said, a hip, a hop, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip hop, a top, and you don't stop, I walk into the bang, you're the boogie, you're up, chuck the boogie. Right. And so the kangaroo raps, and so we did this whole sequence, and then... We shot it in a reshoot, and that was it. You know, I have to tell you, I wasn't in a big movie at that point. I mean, I was—I uh, had a small role in Jerry Maguire. I was in Stand By Me about the four boys, but I hadn't been in, like, a big action movie. I was a in a movie called Hollywood, Mission. major Hollywood, man. I was in one movie called Mission to Mars, and that was a big movie. But big I was one. sort of, uh, I, was, uh, I was a co-star. I was, uh, you know, I wasn't. Um, Leading man. You know, I just, yeah, I just sort of kept my mouth shut and. Stayed in the background. Yeah, know? I mean, you and, were um, you were Trip McNeely and Can Hardly Wait. Don't undersell yourself. I understand that, but mm -hmm. Can Hardly Wait was shot at one house. It was a party. They shot it in like three days. It was like you were the you main know, character in that movie, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it wasn't like an eighty million dollar movie <laughs> with like special effects and everything. I'm... So I just said, you know, do whatever you want to do. So the first trailer comes out, and the whole thing is like, go see Kangaroo Jack, and it's just the kangaroo rapping, and it's animated. And I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what this movie is about. It's not about a rapping kangaroo. And so that was the commercial everywhere. And I remember I was watching, I was with my brother and we were watching cartoons, I guess. I'm sorry, I was in my 20s and we were watching. Don't watch cartoons. Uh, 
cartoons and a commercial for the movie came on and it came on <laughs> in between like a like like a like um like a um toy commercial uh, yeah like a toy commercial i was trying to come up with a funny toy coleco what were those things called uh like rubik's it was cube like yeah uh, um kaleidoscope uh, coleco vision uh, coleco creepy vision. crawlers what, whatever <laughs> creepy crawlers right it, it, it came in between two kids commercials and i was like oh my god this is this is a kids movie like this is now officially a kids movie i was like but the only kids thing is that one scene where I get hit on the head and it's like, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, uh, this is not an animated movie about a talking kangaroo, you know? I mean, like, there was, I did frontal nudity in this. I go through a, a grotto. <laughs> I hope that's true. I hope that's true. And it was like the first true. time where I was like, and when you do frontal nudity, I got to tell you, it's really scary. There's a hundred people there and it's like on a set and I had to go into water. That's why I got naked. And the water was freezing, so I'm like off camera, being like, "Oh, come on, yeah, come on, talk come to on. him, come on, come on, come talk on, to come him, on. don't do this, don't do it in a park, don't do that, don't do that, don't park. Park. Don't do that in a park near kids." And they were like, "All right, and we're rolling," and I was like, "Stop, hold the roll, oh, God. <laughs> right, come on, buddy, warm up, warm up, warm up, come on, we gotta get more. yeah, get a little rice, buddy, warm. put it around it, rice, I buddy. I can't, I can't do this because you know I, I don't want to get too graphic, but you know when things are freezing, you could. It We've looks, all seen Seinfeld. We get we it. Know. We know. Yeah. Things True. look like an acorn, you know? I mean, yeah. like literally like a baby acorn, you know? And it's just I like, mean. it's just crazy. Um, And anyway, I remember I, I went to go see the film opening weekend um, in New York on 23rd Street. And it was filled with kids in there. And just like, uh, you know... I, I could tell it wasn't what parents were expecting, you know, or kids. And <laughs> no, <laughs> anyone in the theater, first, you, it wasn't what the was audience was real, expecting. It was my first real introduction to like uh, what like goes this on is the way in Hollywood the works. mirrors world of like Hollywood and everything. And so now when you say, how do you get recognized? A 30 something year old person will come up to me and be like, hey, man, you're uh you're Jerry O'Connell, right? And I'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll go, Kangaroo Jack, right? <laughs> and I'll go, yeah, that was me, Kangaroo Jack. And they'll go, man, I got to tell you, that's the first time I ever really felt lied to uh, in my <laughs> life was going to see that movie. <laughs> like, that movie was yeah. just one, it was a huge lie. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, so sorry. It was an R movie. And then they changed it. And uh, I saw sorry. it in theaters. I, mean, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you were, I think it was a little rowdy, so rowdy. So, I mean, go, you know, uh, um, so, I mean, uh, oh, I'm here. sorry to anyone who, I, I'm not giving refunds for it. If no, <laughs> don't do that. I'm sorry. Here, here, here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to ask you, because you, you, you're obviously a well-known uh, uh, celebrity and actor. You've got a lot of pull in Hollywood, and we've got a lot of pull on the internet. Tremendous. Now, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you follow a lot of pop culture news, going. okay? I follow it all. But there's been a gigantic effort to get a movie a lot, not a lot of people have heard of called Justice League recut and restored to its original format. And what I'm hearing from you is there's an R-rated cut of Kangaroo Jack somewhere out there. How do we get <laughs> how do we bring this to HBO Max? How, Release like, the O'Connell I, cut, yeah. Where is the O'Connell cut? The Hashtag O'Connell the cut. bring back the O'Connell cut. It'll be four hours. That is really. You know what? We should. I mean, I'm Snyder, serious. I would watch that. I would legit rent a, the R-rated version maybe of it. The Snyderverse. Maybe it's really opened like a lot of things. Like there is an R-rated cut of Kangaroo Jack out there. Full frontal. Uh, I mean, involved. Yeah, there is full frontal. Involved. Dude, come on. We. This is like. This is right there. At least a couple million dollars in uh, in in rentals. Right there. I have to imagine of just people wanting to. Want it's pure curiosity this. at yeah, this absolutely. point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Release I mean, the I full don't... frontal cut. The full Release. frontal cut. Kangaroo Jack, semicolon, full frontal. <laughs> the rated R <laughs> cut. Yes. Done. Right. To, and look at Greg. I can see where Greg's at. Greg is tweeting right, it right I'm, I'm tweeting right now. now, everybody. We're starting the Greg's... movement. Hashtag release the, uh, the O'Connell cut. Greg oh, is already so tweeting good. it. Now, I Jerry, it. what had you talked to any of your family while you were filming that movie and kind of given them a hint of what the movie was going to be 
because I, I, I got to assume while you're filming, you're like, yeah, I'm doing this Jerry Brokheimer kind of thing. It's a crime. It's a it's a sort of mafioso mob thing. And then because I can't imagine what their reactions were <laughs> watching <laughs> seeing the trailer, watching yeah. Cartoon Network and seeing an ad and being like, whoa, this is not the movie I expected. And I'm sure yeah, um, but I'm sure Jerry knew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, I never really. You know, it's funny when you do a job. You know, I'm someone who does a job and then, uh, like, I just sort of forget about it. I don't really, like, I'm not someone who goes back and talks about what I did. I think that's a little, I mean, everyone has their process. But to me, it's like, once you do it, it's over with. So I didn't even think about them editing it and even changing the rating of it. I was like, listen, they're the pros. I'm not going to tell them what to do. So let them do it. It's, you know, it wasn't until... But, you know, we've heard R-rated movies going to PG-13. We've heard PG-13 going to PG, but that two-level <laughs> leap. <laughs> Read it R to PG. You know, wait, well, the, listen, the I, one where I showed my dick is being advertised on Cartoon <laughs> Network? <laughs> With a rapping kangaroo? <laughs> uh, this is well, so I didn't have Look, I didn't have, I didn't have seven hours to watch the Snyder Cut, but, um, I mean. <laughs> well, do you have it? five hours to watch our review? Yeah, we was did it, it in two it, parts. Was it worth it? The Snyder Cut? Yeah, I, think it I think it's worth watching. It's definitely it's, worth watching. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. worth watching. It's, it's worth watching for a number of reasons, but not the least of which is exactly what we're talking about, right? To see where a project can just completely go off in a different direction. And then it's a, it's an interesting opportunity to like do exactly what we're talking about. Where I, I'm legitimately, we're all kidding aside, I would love to watch the R-rated cut of Kangaroo Jack to see right. – what that original vision was and then compare and contrast that to the PG version. Well, you know, listen, I don't want to, I, 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 I don't know if we want to call, are we calling the other version, the Whedon cut? I mean, but I mean, you know, I don't want to, yeah, people call it that. They're calling it yeah. justice league now. Oh, um, this league, you know, um, but you know, I have to say, uh, um, uh, uh, movie going was a different experience when justice league came out four years ago. Mm -hmm. It was, theater owners telling movie studios i need as many showings yeah if you have it over two hours i'll kill you we need people in and out of this if this mm -hmm. is going to be you know your big tentpole movie we got to have 30 showings a night and you can only do that if it's under two hours you know and uh, um you know they're under immense pressure to do that you you know what i'm saying i mean absolutely so Absolutely. Uh, you and, know, now now we view things. We have an entire pandemic to view things. I mean, oh, we yeah. have uh, you're we're desperate for any sort of content, anything. I mean, I scour. I, I'm scouring. I'm I, I, I'm I'm joining streaming sites that are like putting so many viruses on everything. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just you know, dying just... for something. And it um. It, it, it's uh, it's so a four hour movie is not only you know okay now it's it's celebrated we we want a six hour movie we have the time you know we I and, mean we will watch um, it in two different two different nights I mean we broke it up into two different nights and well not Greg Greg mainlined it but the rest of us twice full time no big deal. you know we wanted to bring energy to it and and have some uh, some well thought out thoughts but yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a different. Let's open honestly, the comments and see if the, the comments say Nick had well thought out thoughts. Oh, real, let's uh, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Real, real let's, quick, just to, let's just not bring back, that energy into this. Just to go back Kevin? to Kangaroo Jack for a moment. Yeah, of course. When the poster came out, were you <laughs> shocked? Were you like, oh, that's yep. the angle they're going for the poster? Where it's just, Kev, you know, yeah. please bring it up. Yeah. I sent it to sent it to assets. Oh, you did. Uh, okay. This, this, I did well, because uh, the, the poster's the poster, tagline at the top says he stole the money and he's not giving it back. And it's just right. it's just the kangaroo. <laughs> right. It's the kangaroo, I believe, wearing glasses. Like, yep, he's wearing glasses and a Brooklyn sweatshirt. He Brooklyn looks very mischievous. He yeah. looks very he's mischievous. He's up to something. Yeah, there, there he is. is. This kangaroo is up not, to something. Is he not with his paw or hoof or whatever you call a kangaroo hand? His claw? What, what, what do kangaroos have? A pincer, I believe. Pincer. Like a pincer. <laughs> a pincer. pincer. I don't think it's a pincer. I think it's more Kangaroo's close to a hook. For the pincers and pouches. <laughs> uh, with his little claw, like isn't he like like tilting the sunglasses? Not in this one. Not in this manner? one. But the sunglasses are off his nose in the one we're looking at right now. So he's kind of looking over it like like a school teacher would if you if you misbehaved in our right. class. But isn't the isn't the kangaroo in that poster looking into the lens? Yes. Yes. I mean he's not oh, yeah. he's not acting like an animal. He's acting like an animated a human being. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I remember seeing that and being like, wow, what a bummer. I thought, you know, this was going to be my Reservoir Dogs. My, like, you know, I did full frontal nudity. I did yeah. everything like Christian Bale told me to, to do. do. Like, <laughs> yeah. I did, like, you know, I, I you know, I, I I went for it. And um, you're right. We need, we need a, what, what are we calling it? Um, the O'Connell Cut. Need, the O'Connell Cut. The O'Connell yeah. Cut. I, if, I mean, unless, unless, your dick in this, it's called the O'Connell cut. To be fair, it could also unless, be the O'Connell uncut. Uh, yeah, uh, that's fair. Depending, fair. we don't we don't judge. No, I'd also say this: if you want to get Anthony on this cut. too, we can we can come up with a different name. But if Anthony is down to to get in on this movement, we can figure something out that's that's inclusive for for both of the stars in the movie. But I just I just someone's got to have Jerry Bruckheimer's phone number, and I'm looking through my phone. I don't seem to have it. Um, Andy, mm-hmm. do you have Jerry's number? Do you? Uh, do no, you I deleted it. Jerry Bruckheimer. It was an accident. Yeah, I got a new phone. Dropped it in the water. Well, Jerry, maybe you can call him up and see if he's interested in putting this bad boy out. <laughs> I just I, like he's actually like a real player in Hollywood. I'm just I know he's scary. Like how this, but how this works out? Like, do I call up and it's like, uh, Mr. Bruckheimer, Jerry O'Connell on line one. And like, what? And <laughs> Jerry O'Connell, and like then I imagine like the assistant covering the phone and going, Jerry O'Connell from from Kinky. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> Hello, hey Jerry, hey. How are you? Good, good. How have you been? It's been, wow, it's been uh, 18 years. Yeah. How are things? <laughs> good, good. Going well. Listen, I don't know if you saw, you know, all that hullabaloo about the, the Snyder Cut and the release of <laughs> Snyder Cut and, you know, HBO Max really got a lot of traction on that. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. I don't, I don't have six hours. <laughs> laugh, uh, everybody yeah, laughs. Yeah, I know. It was long. Um, oh, man. Uh, did you hear... Uh, the uh, kind of funny podcast, break it down. <laughs> oh God, it's a two parter. Yawn. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, Jerry, I was wondering if um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to do the same thing with with KJ. What's with KJ? KJ with what? What's KJ? <laughs> uh, Kangaroo Jack, uh, Mr. Bruckheimer. That's what we what call the kids. Call it. Uh, <laughs> the kids call it. The kids call it KJ. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I wonder if we could release. The original cut, the original film that we intended to bring everyone to the masses. The original yeah. Kangaroo Jack. I'm talking about the O'Connell cut. <laughs> and scene. Is it? <laughs> is, uh, Jerry? Yeah, Mr. Bruckheimer? Is this a fucking joke? <laughs> it's never, he's never, it's never going to happen. I mean, God, I would be funny. Listen, if anybody could do it, we could do it here at the kind of funny part. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put so some true. We're gonna put it's some a effort long into shot, this. You know, I think, I think people. What's the next in line for, uh, for a movie that is that needs a new cut? Um, Suicide Squad, Ayers cut. That's what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's David what Ayer everyone's cut. asking for. They want to see the original Suicide cut. Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, absolutely sure. But right behind that, Kangaroo Jack. You know, Kangaroo what Jack. Oh, KJ, what about? Yeah. What about Birds of Prey? Are they asking for uh No, that movie was no, good. Liked that they didn't one. need yeah, they didn't yeah, need that one to be fixed. That one, that didn't, one didn't get messed up. Yeah. I'm just saying that the marketing of this is just built in. The rated R Kangaroo Jack full frontal version. Come on, dude. How Kyle in our chat is pointing that? out that this is a Warner Brothers movie. And so we right got, there, HBO oh, Max, we got yes. the they, they got the juice, they we got, got the these things. things. This is great. Get Bruckheimer, what was it, $7 million extra dollars or whatever it was? I said two, but I have no idea how money works. So sure. I imagine that's that's good enough to – I mean, listen, the, the difference is this, though, is that Snyder had to go back and, you know, do finished visual effects. He had to recolor stuff. He had to do a lot – you know, he had to do a lot more work on that. This sounds like they test screened the rated R version. So there's it's a assembled. cut somewhere in a vault that's assembled. Maybe you got to bring it out, tweak the sound a little bit. Again, I don't know how any of this works. Are they really? No. Are, hey, are, are they really keeping that stuff? I mean, don't they just at some point throw it away? Like, are they really paying the storage it, space it on this depends. stuff? It depends. It depends on um, – well, I know for sure that a lot of great films um, get archived. So they'll take that and they'll archive it in Washington for, for future preservation. I don't know if the R-rated version of Kangaroo Jack got that treatment. <laughs> Or not? It could be. It could be at the Smithsonian. Whoa, you don't know it's, that. It's possible. It you don't know. It's so. possible. <laughs> it was so you're good. Now, Everyone's like, so some some kids you're like I'm gonna. <laughs> now you're making light of a serious matter, Nick. You're just being rude. <laughs> I I uh, I apologize first and foremost to any of the hardcore Kangaroo Jack fans. Uh, I somewhere 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 in some vault in Warner Brothers, there's a cut of this. I guarantee it. We need to get in there. We need to dust it off. 
uh, and and get all the grain out of it and just get it on HBO Max, man. I think this would be holy. I mean, I, it can't be if there is a cut. It can't be that much to digitize it and just get it out there. That would be amazing. Yeah, we don't need to do reshoots or anything. No, it's, I mean, it's out there. Even though I would love oh. some reshoots. All oh, of a sudden, no. Jerry Jones, he's 18 years older, and then the next <laughs> scene, he's back to where he was. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, was the Snyder Cut better than uh, just, Justin League, Justice League? Yes, the yes, 100%. yes, it was. Yeah, no doubt, no debate. By, by how much? Two Miles. hours. Two just hours just by <laughs> being a fact of it was better. <laughs> was it better by 10%, 20%, 100%? It was more cohesive. It was more understandable in the story. The story was easy, like the story overall made more sense. Um, but I mean, to your earlier point, it's 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 a hard comparison because you're comparing something that was a two hour long sort of mm. reshot cobbled together I, you know, film to a four hour anyone. long movie. I, I don't want to upset anyone. I love everyone. You are, you are the love. second you say Justice League, you're already pissing off at least fifty percent of the people listening to this. But I do want to say. You know, I wasn't so hot on the old <clears throat> Justice League, uh, and I did play Superman for many years in Warner Brothers animation. Um, but after seeing, uh, you know, I was working on sort of the Warner Brothers animation side, and after seeing Batman v Superman, I was like, ah, you know what? I uh, mm, I apologize to everyone for saying this. I'm not too sure about uh, all this live action stuff. I have a feeling that uh, some of the stuff we're working on over in Warner Brothers animation is oh. Huh, I mean, <clears throat> you preach. Uh, uh, you know, I was. Uh, it was. I was feeling a little competitive at the time, so just sure. becoming a little bit, a little bit from a jealousy standpoint, because obviously their budgets are infinitely larger than ours at Warner Brothers Animation. But I was like, like, look at our scripts and storylines, and like what we do and stuff like that, and you know, uh, just how we portray Dark Side and like all that stuff. I was a little like. This is what they're doing with all that money. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, so you're, you're preaching to the converted on this one because we've I've, we've said me and Greg have said since day one that just look to the animated properties that Warner Brothers does, DC does. They're it's always great. It's heartbreaking that so many DC stories are turned into amazing animated films and people don't want to watch them because they're cartoons, or well, or they just don't get them. pushed around. People watch them. No, no, people watch them. No, no and, and, and Nick really and I watch them. To be clear, I watch and, like, we're big fans. I'm saying yeah. I wish it was getting a wider release. I w wish more people were watching. I hope HBO Max you know, is help leading I, to that. I do have to say a little bit of that, but also uh, toward the end of my um, my uh, time um, in the Warner Brothers animated world, we were releasing them for a couple weeks a year. There's a really funny um, photo of me uh, going to the premiere. If you look up Jerry O'Connell's Superman suit, um, I, I wore this. It's a really funny photo that I wore to the red carpet of it. And uh, so they gave it a couple weeks of a theatrical release. And I got to say, it is so fun watching those animated There's, movies in a movie theater. It was, oh yeah, um, for sure. Oh hell yeah, dude! Really That's fun. Awesome. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing Superman. It was such a learning curve for me. You know, I've been in there the DC go. world for for a little bit. I had played Sh Shazam, so that's more of a teenage. I played a teenager. I played Nightwing, more of a teenager. And then as I got older, um, they let me play Adam, and um, then um, they were looking to change casts and. Uh, and they cast me as Superman and it was for one film. And then I did five more, awesome. but wow. it That's was, awesome. I got to tell you, it was such a learning curve for me because um, I did the first one and I made a grave error of immediately when it was released, going on Reddit and Twitter mm. and <laughs> just seeing what people thought about it. I think I did a really good job. Let's check out what the internet says. This guy's the worst right. Superman of all today. time. I hate yeah. this. The sliders say, guy. Listen, Listen, um, people were very critical of how I portrayed Superman. Um, and it was crazy to read them all. And I, I got to say, the biggest thing for me that I found was people hated that I didn't really differentiate Superman from Clark. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's fun. I don't know what I was thinking or what choices I was making. Maybe I didn't, you know, I just don't think like, like I think it was like Christian Bale time, and I didn't want to play. I didn't want to do a voice for uh, Superman. But at the same time, there subtly has Batman, to be a difference. But there <laughs> is it as good as my two gods. There, yeah, Andy, how, was that, how was that compared to the two gods? <laughs> there, there, there has to be a, a a difference, and it has to be worked on. And I gotta say, it really was. It was so eye opening to me to play a 
an iconic character, an intellectual property, whatever you want to uh, say it, because I think anyone who works in these worlds has to, it's painful. It's almost like going to a therapist. You have to go to Twitter and especially Reddit because they know. And it's, I got to tell you, it's, it's not my prop. Superman isn't mine. Sure. It's, it's theirs. It's yours. It's, it ain't mine. And you know, it ain't Henry Cavill's. It ain't even Zack Snyder's, you know, but, sure. um, it, it really was, it was, a, and over the six movies, I really like, I got to a point where uh, I really paid attention to them. And I really, um, those comments became less and less, um, angry and it was a real learning experience for me to play you know if you know now that i'm in the star trek world and i'm in that show lower decks luckily i'm playing a character that is new to the canon and everything Mm -hmm. um you're not playing kirk (laughs) that'd be a hard one to step into (laughs) well there's a little more freedom there you know if i was playing young kirk i would have to i would have to base it on william shatner you would have to you can't i mean well that's and then and then it's tricky because does it become an imitation and you have questions? But listen, if I did one episode where I was playing a young Kirk, I would immediately go to Reddit and say, okay, it's all yours. How do you want me to change it? I mean, literally, it's like it's like doing a painting job or something. Hey, uh, do you like this? Um, you, you want me to change these colors? You want me to keep them? Um, I mean, but do you, do you and- feel like some of that was that, that backlash, though, is, is just from the fact that the, the voices for specifically Superman and Batman have just been so iconic, especially for, like, me and Greg growing up with, like, Kevin Conroy and, like, uh, Tim, Tim Daly, Daly, like, doing those voices. Tim- it's Tim got – there's got to be a natural process where fans get acclimated to those new voices. And I feel like that's probably some of where maybe a little bit of the – I don't know, I don't say anger, but tenacity might come from from the fan base. I can't believe I'm saying this, but they were right. I wasn't playing it well. Wow. Oh, don't awesome. give him that power. Tim always <laughs> tells know. me I'm wrong. I say, no, Tim. It's just how I like to play my character on this podcast. <laughs> they were. Character. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, and I'm trying to figure out, like, emotionally what I'm going through saying this. Like, is it defeat? You know, am I saying uncle? But I don't know what to tell you. Like, they were right. I just call well, it. I mean, I think right. that's, that's one of the things you're talking about, right, of, like, you know, you're borrowing Superman for a little bit, right? And you know, obviously, he has a long history before you and hopefully a long history after you. So to go and take that note, right? I think it's a, a performance thing that you would take from any audience, right? It, like the, hey, the, the, the um, benefit of it is if you're doing a play or something, right? And you see reviews and people talk about a specific thing that they didn't like, you can adjust it the next night. Whereas with this, you only you know, get a couple cracks I'm, at it. I'm like getting chills talking about this, but I'm in a really funny show called Lower Decks. It's created by a guy named Mike McMahon, who's from the Rick and Morty world. It's an animated Star Trek. It's hilarious. If you haven't seen it, it's on Paramount Plus. I highly suggest you watch it. It's great. But Jack my Quaid character, uh, Jack Quaid is in it. That's um, why I won't watch it. Why? He's Jack Quaid. We love Jack Quaid. They have a great relationship. Oh, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. The boys talk about Critical a gamer. Boys. He's been, I, I mean, he's he's on there all the time. Um, Dude, let's yeah. squat up. Get Jack. Let's go. <laughs> Next Monday. War zone. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, um, uh, this character that I'm playing, C- Commander Ransom, he's, he's new to the canon. So I get to be a little looser with him. But it's so exciting that, you know, he's going to be in the canon. And I guarantee you, I don't know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, someone's going to have to play him. And they're going to have to watch Lower Decks and be like, all right, let's see what Jerry O'Connell did with mm-hmm. this character because he's going he's gonna to have to play off of it. You know, it's, um, you just have to honor the canon. It's really, it's, I, I, I know a lot of people say, don't give, don't give, don't give power to the commenters, but you have to, man. You just have to. Well, there's a you difference between ones that are super mean and telling you you suck and you should, you know, fuck off and never do this. And then somebody who's like, well, here's my nuanced opinion of it, right? Here's what uh, I did. You know, I, did, I don't think like. I, I don't think there are any nuanced opinions. You have to sort of understand there are no nuanced. People don't go onto message boards to be like, yeah, listen, um, uh, okay, that was that was good. <laughs> here's um, some feedback. I like what you I like what you did there on the second <laughs> you <know>? take. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something kind of honest about it and if you're able to if you're not easily offended 
I'm telling you, if you work in science fiction canon specifically, and you're not easily offended, message boards are, that is your go-to. Go to it. It's your go-to. It's mm -hmm. how you get better. It's how you get better. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I do not neither of those things. I will say this though: yeah, you're not you're not making it easier on yourself stepping into Superman and Star Trek. <laughs> these are not, it's like these are like the most hardcore fan bases that you can get out there. Minus you know, the Star uh, Wars kids, in, we don't talk about really them good anymore. hands. Our our creator Mike McMahon is a super fan. I mean, he knows a lot about like, you know, I I I admittedly I know nothing about Deep Space Nine. I great I, Jerry, you got to watch Deep Space Nine. It's great. It's so I know, good. I know, I know, I know. I know it's on Netflix uh, right now. I start. I started. I, I got like four that. seasons in already. I understand that, and I promise I'll catch up. But um, you know, uh, Mike McMahon is continually writing and making jokes about you know what you're up to, season four and DS nine, as he calls it. And he'll make a reference to that, and off. I'll I'll be like at work, and I'll be like, Mike, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about. And he's like, Oh, it's season four, Deep Space Nine. Uh, sorry. Um, let me explain what's what's going on now, and um. It's just um, people sorry, love their five. people love their shows. Sorry, you're on season five. No, I'm sorry, season five, episode twenty one is where I left off. My bad. Season five, episode twenty one. We got that's that. Everybody jot that down. Place. Let's put that. <laughs> Everybody caught Let's up. Everybody down. caught up. And we're Nick left off. Great. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking completely, space completely nine. useless information Are coming you... from my side. Of have you started the episode? Or are we like in the middle? Of it? <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, it looks like it's the beginning of the episode, Jared. It's uh, 45 minutes uh, and 37 seconds left. Oh, episode, we're so not we, got, even, we got a good episode. The third act to go. Huh? Yeah, we got a whole, a whole lot. <laughs> so you know, while but, we're here um, talking about actually being an actor and we're talking about all the things you've done and what people know you for, right? I, I like this question from Madeline, a.k.a. Matt Exposure, who wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can. It says, hi, Jerry and kind of funny crew. I hope you're having a great day. Jerry, you having a great day? Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty okay, good. great. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, is there a role that you almost booked that you are glad you got rejected for, or were not booked for? Do you ever look back at um, one of these things? You're like, oh, I was so close to getting this, and it would, and then you look at the project, you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, I don't think I would have been glad I never did something. Is it something like I turned down and I was like, I'm glad I, I'm. Um, uh, you, can, you can switch it if there's something. Was there something that maybe you you missed out you on know, that you I wish you could have done? I auditioned for that Brandon Ruth Superman, um, the one that uh, oh, oh yeah, Superman Returns. Wow, Superman Returns. I I auditioned for that, and it was funny because J.J. Abrams wrote the script, mm. and he was sort of like a. It was like hipster Superman. It was like you know Clark wasn't a nerd anymore. He was like kind of like a like a goofy like a like a you know like a nerd a like a nerd like a yeah. yeah like a hipster you know and so i played it like that and i sort of um it was obviously nothing they were looking for i mean they didn't even call back with feedback so i guess i could have tried a different approach there somehow no, i mean superman returns sucked that. you were fine don't worry you did fine you did fine um hey, at least they used the original john williams theme great yeah I mean, and this is no offense to Brandon Routh. He was fantastic. Yeah, he was really he, good. I mean, too. and they were like, hey, let's just make, you know, Superman the movie again. Like um, somebody in the writer's room, so like funny. even the same plot. They're like, yeah, make land. Yeah. Like, That's weird. All right. Let's do it again. Oh, you know what? Here's really funny. Um, uh, this is super random. They remade V about 15 years ago. V was a very popular v, the old show. series yeah, in the 80s. Serious. Yeah. And they remade it. And I was a huge V fan in the 80s. And I wanted an audition for it and they wouldn't give me one and uh i could never understand why i called I, like i never bother my agents ever and i called to my agent and i was like i'm a huge fan of v i know this story you got to get me in a room with them uh trust me and so my agent went okay i'll do it and my agent called back and they went they don't they're not interested they don't want to see you and i was like no 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 tell them i'm a huge fan call them back let them know i've watched all the original miniseries i want to be a part of this new one I need to call back and say, yeah, they're the answer is no. Crazy, Heartbreak. right? That's yeah. crazy. Well, why wouldn't that about Kangaroo Jack? You <laughs> <laughs> tell him. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> He's a liar. 
<laughs> before the, the show started, to. O'Connell. before the show started with Jerry, we were talking about your your mustache, and I have an important question because if we're going through with this restoring the 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 full frontal cut of Kangaroo yep. Jack, full you might cut. need to shave the mustache because nope. what we can't have happen is oh, you do reshoots yeah. and then have to CG, CG out your no, mustache. No. Or, that's a big thing with Superman and Justice League. A lot of problems. Or do we just so lean are you into willing that? to do that? Do we just lean into it? Um. I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, Henry Cavill had a mustache that he grew for a role. Mission, Mission Impossible. Impossible. That's yeah. why we won't watch Mission Impossible. A much here. better movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. movie. Really fun movie. You should watch it. I refuse to watch it because and, of this. And he refused to shave his mustache for the reshoots, right? I think he was contractually, contractually yeah, obligated. Yeah. They were like, we're still shooting Mission Impossible. You can't shave his mustache. He was like a pivotal character in that. So they wouldn't let uh, him out of it. Could you tell? Uh, I did not see it. I'm so ashamed. Um, could you tell that there were they were like they were they were drawing over his face? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah, very terrible. bad. It was very bad. It was oh, man, it was. We can't do this to Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> oh, all right, man. this is the O'Connell cut. But but here's what I'm going to say, and this is if I may compliment you for a second, Jerry. The mustache is working. Oh, you look great. I, love I mean, to be it. fair, yeah. it was working on Henry Cavill as well. Yeah, I mean, he looked great with it too. So I'm just thinking like. Really, what we're doing is we're just seeing a what if. I mean, if there's a couple scenes we got to fill back in for issues where you got the mustache, I think that can Andy, we can explain that away with a couple lines of dialogue. Off I have um, yeah. I have never grown facial hair in my life. I'm really sad to say this is three months of growth, and it's still like, kind of like patchy and stuff. You can see, oh, sure. It's like I just don't have facial hair. I just don't have it. I mean, I now, don't know if it's a testosterone thing or what, but I just don't have it. Well, first off, you got a great tower. you got a great head of hair, and that's more important. <laughs> yeah, get yeah, away from, those away from the five G tower for a couple of weeks. How, <laughs> help, you know? <laughs> how has the family's reception been for the mustache? Is this... Hate it. Everyone hates it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hate it. Has that has that question ever been answered differently for, about a mustache? <laughs> no, I think people just hate them. Um, I love mustaches, so I want one so badly. But I'm pretty sure my wife has the same reaction. Everyone says, "Why? Why are you doing this?" Yeah, you know, it's like, not for a role. Like, it's just it's just for it's just. It looks dope. Oh, this is this is this is really sad as well. I was with a group of people the other day. Everyone was tested. And, you know, everyone was clean. Um, it wasn't like an underground party or anything, and it was uh. <laughs> It was a very safe space, and um, we believe in science. And uh, <laughs> yeah. um, when saw me and went, "Oh, hey, look at your mustache!" And by the way, I'm growing it just because I'm completely uh, like I'm uh, I'm completely out of work. Like nothing's going on. And <laughs> this is it. I'm doing this. Real down period. Real down period. That's why I was excited um, to come be on this show. <laughs> but, um, Don't worry, dude. We're yeah. gonna get you back. We're all the benefits. <laughs> the Greg, 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 you should have known something when you DM'd me. You're like, "Hey, are you available to do this?" And I was like, "Any day." <laughs> <laughs> but um, but um, uh, um, someone I saw someone in there, an actor, an actor. Uh, they said, "Whoa, look at your mustache!" And I went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And they said, oh, "Wow, it's for uh, it's for a role. You're 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 doing that for a role." And I was about to be like, "Oh no, I'm I'm only doing the kind of funny pocket. Nothing's coming up." And uh, I was about to say that, and I was like, "I just I couldn't I couldn't say <laughs> you that." Couldn't, so I just like, you didn't yeah. I went, admit yeah. that. I said, "Yeah, it's yeah, it's for a role." And they were like, "Really? What? What?" <laughs> and I was like, "It's um, it's for a western. It's a western." Mm -hmm. and, uh, Cowboyish, cowboy type person. And they were like, "Wow, cool, cool, cool." cool. <laughs> When's that shooting? When's that? <laughs> You're like booking we a flight. We have, we have a like, oh, I got to do it right now. Actually, yeah. I got to get out of here. I will say one thing about having a mustache. I do sometimes because I've never had one, and it's really, it's pretty fun to have. Um, I do sometimes if I get out of the shower or something like, and I put a towel on, I um, and I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror, full frontal, and like I and I forget. <laughs> I forget that I have a mustache. I love to like lean into the mirror and like wipe the steam off the mirror and just look at myself and just go, oh man, you're in too deep. <laughs> like, you're in too deep. Like you're undercover? You gotta get out. You have a family. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get back to your, to you, to your life. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to get out. <laughs> I sometimes say that. Your wife just comes in, pulls the mirror off, and just throws it out of the front door. She's like, we're done with this bit. We're done with this bit. 
<laughs> all right now uh, speaking of your wife here i have a question from arvel all right and this is also about okay. star trek so there you go uh arvel wrote in patreon.com slash kind of funny just like you can it says hi everyone and hi jerry uh thank you for ba- for being in basically most of the tv shows i've been watching in the 90s namely my secret identity which for some reason was called ultraman here in germany and sliders wow uh, wow. with, the top, with the topic of a multiverse becoming more and more mainstream, do you think sliders could work in today's streaming world? And since I'm a massive Trekkie, I'm also extremely happy uh, to have you and your wife join the franchise, both in the number one position. Now, right. I've heard in interviews that you both are teasing each other because of that. So the question is not who's a better number one, but who do you think will become the first command as captain or who will get their first command as captain? Wow. Um, that's so funny. Um questions in there um, there's two in there yeah all, the two big ones and the first one will do the tracking thing then we'll get to sliders because that's the most important thing but yeah do you think thing, you know i have to say my character plays my wife plays a character who was in the original pilot mm-hmm. of star trek i'm getting chills saying this the original pilot the unaired pilot where my character plays a character named una who is a number one who is basically like a jonathan freaks that's their that's her rank and I don't know if we ever saw in television, it could be different on Deep Space Nine and also in Star Trek literature. I want to apologize to all fans. I'm not caught up on all Star Trek fans. Nick will keep you honest, don't worry, from what I know. Um, But my wife, I believe her character peaks at at number one. Okay. At, at, I believe it's Lieutenant. Or lieutenant commander. I apologize. I think my wife is a lieutenant commander. And I think I am a lieutenant commander. Um, because my character is new to the canon, I could very well captain yeah. my own ship sometime. And my character is so funny. I mean, he just, he's a guy named Ransom. He's like, he would be the person who is always in the HR office. He, uh, <laughs> it's a really fun character to play. I play opposite, um, a very funny actress named Tawny Newsom and Tawny is, you know, uh, sort of like um, one of these, you know, kids who lives on the lower decks who wants to buck authority. And I'm all about playing everything by the book. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's so fun to play. So there is no canon regarding how high my character can Anything go. So can happen. I would say, mm-hmm. I would say my character could possibly captain a ship. Excellent. I think Brad. it could happen. There you go. Um, oh, and Sliders was a sci-fi show I did in the '90s. I had so much fun doing it. That was fantastic. Um, All right, we want to talk about reboots. Right I, when, you, when we booked you on this, I was like, "That's what we're doing. We're starting a hashtag to bring back Sliders." Somehow it's evolved you know, into Kangaroo Jack, but whatever. <laughs> I gotta say, I uh, I do have a call. I've gotten a call from a lot of our cast members. I did call the Peacock Network. Uh, I yes. guess their company is. Universal, <clears throat> someone was talking about their parent company and their internet speeds earlier. And we're not naming any names. We're not saying we're not any saying other companies. We're not going to say anything, Nick. Good, we're not going to say any names, internet. Nick. That is some Mute good your fucking internet. Yeah. It is good internet. Um, but I, um, I have put a call into them, and they have not called me back. So mm. I don't know what's happening mm. with that. Mm. So there could it. be a reboot. If it is happening, it might be happening without me. I don't own the property, you know? They couldn't I do it do, without you. I do have another call into the guy who created it, a guy named Tracy Torme, but I'm not sure that he has the rights to it. He also created a show called Carnival on HBO, if you remember that show. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, um, well, hold on, hope. I, I, I don't have any updates. We got to get behind yeah. it because, yeah, the, it's, you know, the Avengers now. You got the DC stuff out there. People understand multiverses now. And the slider's right. ahead of its time. You guys jumping through it with the remote control. Every time I hold the remote control, I think about it. How cool that was. <laughs> I think about it when I get those little burgers as apps. <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape it. See, you, you, were, you made sliders big, the appetizers. That was all you <laughs> Right. Oh, it took me a second. You were, you were talking about earlier, like, what do people recognize you for? Like, um, do see, like, sort of a smartly dressed person in their 30s, someone who is, like, someone who probably works in tech or something, you know, they probably have, like, expensive clothes on or something, and, like, you know, expensive Warby Parkers on, um, 
they'll like come up to me and I know it's it's gonna be a slider. Slider. They're gonna ask about sliders. You know? <laughs> sliders. <laughs> because because you know it was about like parallel universes and you know quantum physics and all that sort of stuff and it wasn't uh, you know whatever uh, whatever the eighteen you know there was like always equations that we were talking about and stuff. It was oh, amazing. Sorry. It was ahead of never. Oh, sorry. It. Hey, hey guys. Oh, five G's finally killing him. Hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go. Okay. okay. <laughs> we love you, Jerry. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Uh, let's figure this out. I'm so. This is so. I'm so ashamed. No, you didn't. You this is all? great. Yeah, we, 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 we did the okay. whole show pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting ready to outro. You're fine. You made it to the end. You hit the finish line. Um, yeah, that's my kids uh, calling their. Uh, Need Roblox books. I gotta take yeah. them to. Uh, my children are failing math. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here, let me outro, and then you can go get your kids to math class. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast each and every week, twice a week, four, sometimes five. Best friends gather on these microphones, each coming to bullshit with each other to bullshit about the bullshit they want to bullshit about. If you like that, you can head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to be part of the show, of course. Have a good time and hang out with us. Uh, if you have no bucks to toss our way, though, no big deal. You can go to youtube.com slash kindoffunny or podcast services around the globe each and every week to get two brand new episodes jerry i want you to know in the first five minutes you had won over the chat where i was uh, demetrius newell said uh, jerry o'connell is climbing the ranks of my favorite guest so fast and then joe merton said he is officially my favorite guest so you killed it and you're welcome back here anytime i hope you don't get more work so you have more time to come hang out with us greg nick andy engaged one thank you first time long time <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure sir you go out there you take care of those kids uh where can people keep up with you where do you send people to follow all the jerry shenanigans um i am you know what i'm on yelp these days i'm giving like <laughs> reviews to places <laughs> i love, reviewing. I love you I'm jerry i love reviewing things i always leave positive reviews i mean i know like yeah. we were talking about reddit earlier and people sure. leave bad reviews. that's real it's my thing if i go somewhere and like service is good or something's good i like hit yelp immediately so i'm jerry good, o'connell yeah. on yelp Okay. And, <laughs> Look uh, for Jerry O'Connell on Yelp. Great. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. You know, I, I follow all you guys. I'm Wait, Jerry that. O'Connell, I need real quick. You did a Yelp review of Tom Tom, the restaurant? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Tom I'm going to read this later. Very excited about this. this. Tom Tom, of course, there's those two characters from Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. And I did yeah. a really funny thing where I, I reviewed their restaurant well, but I made all references to like like the bravo network it was a really fun thing to do i am excited to read this we'll have to talk about this next time we have you on the show oh uh, guys um uh please um let's let's play some video games i'm gonna recharge my yes i'm gonna text you when, when this is all done and get your address so xbox can send you this xbox and you can make your wife very angry <laughs> it's gonna be perfect i love is it my is my one not compatible it probably needs an update it's been a little while oh they well yeah but they, there's a new generation of xbox out there and they want to take care of you so get We're ready to better than one it's gonna be great Love you guys. All right. Bye, buddy. Bye, Jerry. Bye. The O'Connell cut. Let's make it happen. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're not the coming over cut. <laughs> if you're not coming over to patreon.com slash kindofforny for the post show, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>